On today's episode, I'll be discussing a recent interview to Raúl Grijalva, Nidia Velázquez, and José Serrano about the Puerto Rico issue. And at the end of today's episode, I'll also be making a very special and important announcement about Puerto Rico Forward, so please stay tuned until the end. Hi, my name is Andrew Mercado Vasquez, and welcome to the PRF Review, the show based on the podcast Puerto Rico Forward, which you can always listen to on iTunes and uh, Spotify and all major platforms you get your uh, podcasts from. Now, today's episode is very important because it dis- we d- we're going to discuss the opinion of three members of Congress that are hugely influential in the uh, Latino and Hispanic population in the United States. So we're talking about Raúl Grijalva, Nidia Velázquez, and José Serrano. Now, this interview was published by a rec- by, recently, by, um, about Monday, if I'm not mistaken, by El Nuevo Día, which is the major news outlet here in, in Puerto Rico. And it's important because the interview was about the Puerto Rico status issue, how the status, the status can, uh, can finally transform out of a colonial context. So Raúl Grijalva went first, and it's, in, it's very important to highlight that Raúl Grijalva is chairman of the U.S. Committee of Natural Resources. So this committee has a huge part to play in Puerto Rico's political and legal uh, structures. And it's a, it's a very important body when it comes to determining whether or not Puerto Rico will be able to do X or Y thing. So whatever it comes to a matter about Puerto Rico, this body is very important and very influential to those types of decisions. So what does Raúl Grijalva say when it comes to uh, finally solving the Puerto Rico status issue? First off, he says that it's not the time uh, for Congress to do that. Right now, and, and these are his words, of course, the uh, I, I forgot to mention, the interview is in Spanish. But... These are basically their statements. Uh, Raúl Grijalva says that it, right now it's not the time in Congress to discuss that, that, that currently the political climate in Congress isn't favorable to be able to discuss that type of uh, subject matter, and that he sees very little a possibility of that type of uh, discussion to, to have any place in Congress currently. So that's the chairman of the U.S. Committee of Natural Resources, Raúl Grijalva's opinion. Essentially saying, don't even try it. Nidia Velázquez, on the other hand, uh, places a little bit more of the of the responsibility on local political struggles, and on the on the obstacle of the economy. So Nidia Velázquez focuses more on the fact that here in the archipelago there isn't a a general accepted opinion on what the status solution should be, and the two major options are statehood or independence. Of course, you have the free association option as well. But essentially, she highlights that here in Puerto Rico, there really isn't any consensus. And since there's no consensus here in Puerto Rico, then how can Congress step in? Uh, because it's as soon as the, the status debate is brought to uh, Congress people's attention, the first thing they highlight is, well, they, they're in Puerto Rico, they don't even know what they want. So what are we going to do if we step in? And also, Nidia Velasquez highlights the fact that it might not be the right time for that discussion to take place because of Puerto Rico's economic uh, struggles currently. And finally, we have Jose Serrano. Jose Serrano basically uh, proposes that he acknowledges that the people of Puerto Rico have a very important role to play, but Jose Serrano does something very important. He also highlights that it is Congress who has the final say in regards to what Puerto Rico's status is going to be. And as a result, he understands and I agree, as far as this, that Congress should be the one that places on the table the options to choose from, clearly and openly, without any type of uh, wordplay. It's either independence or status. Basically, that's what Jose Serrano states. But he doesn't specifically say that it's time to solve the Puerto Rico issue. Basically, he proposes that this is what Congress should do, but essentially it's a very it's a very bland statement what he does. Why am I bringing these, these uh, statements up? Why am I bringing this interview up? Because I believe that this is essentially what is always going to be the answer from, from Congress. It's always going to be, 
well, your economy isn't strong enough. It's always going to be, well, you don't have any consensus locally. Or it's always going to be, there's no space in the agenda for that, or it, the political climate here in Congress isn't uh, appropriate for us to be able to enter that discussion. Or the administration is focusing on other things. The point is, there's never going to be a perfect time to discuss the Puerto Rico issue and the status issue. It's never going to happen. If anyone is trying to allow Congress to suddenly spontaneously come together and solve the Puerto Rico issue, that person is just should not hold their breath. Because there is never going to be a perfect moment to discuss such an important subject. Okay, So why continue postponing the, 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 the subject? Why continue postponing or playing some evasive maneuvers around the subject because it's not convenient right now or because it won't be easy right now or because it X or Y factor isn't in favor. There is no perfect moment. The only moment is now. So the Puerto Rico issue needs to be resolved. The Puerto Rico issue cannot wait. If you think about it, the Puerto Rico issue is 120 plus years old. So in 120 years, there was never a perfect moment. Why should there be in the future? There won't be. So it's up to us, the people that believe in this subject, the people that believe in, in Puerto Rico and that want to see it prosper, to move forward the Puerto Rico issue and to force Congress into a position where they can no longer ignore the subject, where they can no longer use uh, excuses to uh, ev evade or avoid um, touching on this subject. The people and the, the partners of the Puerto Rico issue need to be advocates in this cause and continue pushing for it to be resolved finally. So let's not wait for the situation to be perfect. Let's not wait for conditions to be perfect. We need to act. As I mentioned before at the beginning of the episode, um, I said that I had a very important announcement to make. And the important announcement is the following. Um, Things change, and as, as that is, um, I have come to a decision where I believe that my, uh, my time here in Puerto Rico forward um, has come to a very adequate uh, end. This is a very beautiful chapter in my life that I will always cherish and that I would, I'll always hold close to my heart. All the relationships I've built uh, working on Puerto Rico forward and working with the people in a democracy of work. Um, I, I appreciate so much. I've been blessed with this opportunity and it's been just a wonderful journey so far, but I believe that the, the time has come for me to be able to continue uh, being, being a Puerto Rico issue advocate in, in other terms. Um, I feel like I've been able to uh, express as much as I've wanted on this subject and I've been able to bring as much as much val valuable information as I have uh, have been able to, uh, as I could. Uh, so I, I'm so grateful to everybody that's supported this project. I'm so grateful to everyone at Democracy at Work, and this has been a, a beautiful, a beautiful moment in my life. And I will continue moving the Puerto Rico issue forward. It might not be doing this, or it might not be uh, on the podcast format, but I'll... I'll be around, <laughs> and I'll continue fighting for this cause, a cause that I've been fighting for way before Puerto Rico Forward even was an idea, and I'll continue fighting for it uh, long after. So, so as always, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Y que viva Puerto Rico.